Hey, how's it going? Philip Clark here at the Comic Bug in Manhattan Beach. I'm here at the signing for Zenoscope and Silent Devil, and I'm talking to Christian Baranek, publisher, writer, and jack of all trades for Silent Devil Publishing. How's it going, Christian? Uh, you're also the co-creator of Dracula vs. King Arthur, which you're signing here today. Is that right? That's right. So, um, can you give us a basic idea of what uh, Dracula vs. King Arthur about? It sounds fairly self-explanatory, but well, the title is the concept. But uh, Dracula is sent back in time by Lucifer to face off against it. It's evil meets medieval. You have the eternal life of vampirism versus the eternal life of the Holy Grail. Uh, now, so how did the idea come about? I mean, this is something that you uh, came up with uh, with your brother, right? Well, my brother came up with the idea first. He was working in a bank. He was incredibly bored and sort of came up with the idea there. He was just pitting uh, people against each other online. He was looking up... Uh, certain characters and these two sort of just meshed. I mean, King Arthur searched for immortality in one way and Dracula searched for immortality in another. Both well, of them were like leaders to this led in different ways. And it's cool because they're both but they're both basically in the public domain so it's not like you had to secure any rights or anything like that. Well, we didn't have to but there was a lawsuit that happened halfway through the series that uh, sort of hampered our production costs. Uh, a screenwriter had thought that he had the idea first and, and uh, tried to sue us and so we, we sued first just to uh, maintain the, uh, the trademark which we did not in fact win. <laughs> now there have actually been a string of Dracula versus books that, that you know that have yes. come along the way but you you blazed the trail you were actually first is, is that right? Oh well there have been Dracula versus projects in the past uh, it was Dracula versus Bo the Kid but that was that was a long time ago in the 60s. Uh, when this came out we noticed a lot of, about the Dracula books. Um, it was kind of funny. I was at a convention in Florida, and uh, I, this guy came up and picked up two copies of when one, one and two had could just come out. And I looked up, and it was Peter David who was writing Spike versus Dracula. He said, "Oh, I want to write. You know, I want to read this." And uh, he actually gave us some good props on it, and I gave him some props on Spike versus Dracula. And then after that, you saw a lot of. Uh, Dracula versus Magdalena yep. and Dracula versus Apocalypse and Not so fun. on. So hopefully we'll stand the test of time. Now, I mean, this isn't something that you just like kind of casually did. I mean, you you actually have a literary degree and you you've done your Arthurian research. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I went to uh, James Madison University and my minor okay. is in epic literature. So I spent a great deal of time studying like Bayard, right, uh, the Odyssey. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, all, all the great, like, works from that. And that's what really interesting when I was a kid, too, so. Um, what other titles are you doing in addition to Dracula vs. King Arthur? Uh, Death Comes to Dillinger Collective Edition just came out. Uh, Death Comes to Town Dillinger to take the life of a young girl and her father stands in the way. This one actually did pretty well for us. Uh, that's probably our second best-selling book. There's a sequel coming out called Death and the Man Who Would Not Die. Uh, we also published in collaboration with, uh, with Image a book called Runes of Ragnar. We have a book with the Darkness co-creator David Wall uh, called Executive Assistant, which should be out. Um, a really cool <laughs> western called Fiction Clemens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, Silent Devil is moving forward, but you know we like to take chances. We we don't like to do stuff in the capes and spandex. Really run. We like to so look at different avenues and tell stories. Now, what do you find are your uh, your biggest obstacles as as a publisher? Um, besides securing money to produce the product, it's actually getting the word out and getting the fans to take a chance. On something besides Spider-Man and Superman or X-Men. It's, uh, it's a tough market, at least here in the, in the U.S. I mean, you end up wearing more than hats than just writer and creator. You're you're actually oh, yeah. marketing the books. You're I pick up the books from the warehouse, broker out the custom deals and get them from Hong Kong and uh, deliver the books myself, uh, edit, uh, pay all the bills. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's not just sitting behind a computer or a typewriter and just cranking out scripts and, and collecting checks. I think that that's the romantic version of it for a self-publisher, but no, that's not the case. And I think a lot of other guys actually might work harder than I do. So there's a lot of people that is a one and two man operation putting out several titles. So I don't know how they do it. Uh, I've got these support staff. Back in the day, it was a lot of work. It still is. But. Now, besides Silent Devil, uh, what else are you doing in the comic book industry? I uh, work for Zenoscope. I do writing and marketing for them. I'm writing the issue four or seven, and then uh, I work for Space Dog, which is a multimedia interactive company that uh, partners up with uh, brands and, and produces. Comic books. Excellent. Uh, um, 
How do you feel about the mainstream industry right now? We've got a lot of uh, event comics going on. We just had uh, the death of Captain America. What's your feeling on all of that? I think uh, the death of Captain America is nice for a short-term boost in terms of uh, getting people to actually look at comics, but what are they going to do after that? I mean, it's a ploy to get a fan base really quick, but are they going to stick around? I think the way to stick around is if a fan comes in that is just coming in for Cat 25, wanting towards something great, you know? I mean, uh, like Bone or uh, Mouse Guard, other titles that are done for in independent companies. I mean, there's other stuff out there besides Captain America. I mean, there's only so much you can do with a character like that. I mean, you, you come in, you get your Captain America fix, well, what's after that? Uh, I think that's the key. The key is, okay, we got a, a, a lot of people coming in because of 300, because of Captain America 25. What's next? Nice. Do you have any uh, final thoughts? No. Uh, I just thank you for your time and I hope you pick up some more books. And if people need to get in touch with you or if they want to know more about Silent Devil or Christian Baranek, how can they get a hold of you? Just don't come to my house. Uh, besides that, you can go to silentdevil.com. Excellent. Thank you, Christian. You got it. Thank you.